this is it. We made it. Baltimore Ravens versus Miami Dolphins for the number one seed in the AFC. That's on the line. This game tomorrow is everything, man. It really is. And for the Baltimore Ravens, this one has to be personal. Reason being because the Miami Dolphins, past two times that you played them, they have been some very... I don't want to say historic games, but they've been some historic games because those games have changed the way that a lot of people viewed your franchise. Reason being, last year, the Ravens had a big lead on the Miami Dolphins in M&T Bank Stadium. Had a big lead on the Miami Dolphins. Like, all right, we, we got it in cruise control. Second half, I think the Baltimore Ravens scored like three points. But even still, with them only scoring three points in the second half, they had a big lead in the fourth quarter. So, like, all right, we cool. We, we, we got it. And what happened? Miami Dolphins... They kept chipping away at the lead, chipping away at the lead, chipping away at the lead. Then, boom, Tua throws a game-winning touchdown. Ravens lose. It's like, oh, wow, we lost that game. And that was a game where I just did not see them losing at all. Didn't, didn't, didn't see it happening, especially the way that it was going, but they lost. Then the Dolphins-Ravens game before that, that was the infamous zero blitz game where everybody felt like, all right, well, you just blitz Lamar, and then, okay, we'll be set. Now, we know that's not true, but still, it changed the way that a lot of people looked at the Baltimore Ravens. In the game last year, it made a lot of people feel like, oh, these Ravens, they can't close it out. And, I mean, last year, they couldn't because there were a lot of games after that where they just did not close it out. They had fourth quarter leads, but, yeah, well, you know the rest of the story. So, this game, this is personal for the Baltimore Ravens. It has to be, especially for a Baltimore Ravens team that has continued to be doubted now. There's a lot less doubters than there were before. I mean, if you beat the San Francisco 49ers and you're sitting at 12-3, and three, how much doubt could there really be? But still, this Baltimore Ravens team, their mentality, it has not changed, and it doesn't need to. Now, against these Miami Dolphins, um, this, again, it is for everything. And like I said, it's personal. It's personal for me, too. Because y'all know I'm, I'm down here in Miami, so I got some family that's Dolphins fans. I got a lot of friends that's Dolphins fans, so it's going to be a lot of chirping. I know it, it already has been some chirping, but actually most of them have been quiet because they know. And, and with these Miami Dolphins, they're a tricky team because while they got a nice record, we know their record against good teams, that goes in favor of the Baltimore Ravens. But these Miami Dolphins, they still a team to the, the, we got to deal with them. Now, Jalen Waddle, he will not be in this game. He's already been ruled out. Uh, but Tyreek Hill's still there. <laughs> Tua is still there. Raheem Mostert is still there. They still got a track team. So they are still going to cause problems. I know, I know Jalen Ramsey, he's questionable heading into this game with an injury. Kyle Hamilton, that's a big one. He's questionable heading into this game with an injury. So there's a lot of people's statuses who we just won't know until it's game time. But regardless of who plays, who doesn't, this is huge. This is huge. But I have how I feel like it's going to go. I, I think Ravens barely, 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 barely edge this one out. I think it is going to be a stressful game because, again, everything's on the line. Everything's on the line. Well, not every everything, but a lot is on the line for this one. But in order to help me really get a, a different viewpoint on how things could possibly go, I decided to bring in one of my favorite Miami Dolphins YouTubers Shout out to my guy Doug What is up Ink Raven And Raven fans First off Thank you so much for having me on the channel um, This game is going to be Ridiculous Every time the Dolphins and the Ravens play I always get nervous because in the past You guys have punched us in the mouth But as of late It's been a quite Good rivalry between these two teams and right now it is seems like is the pinnacle of what is going on it is the fight for the number one seed in the afc who would have thought who would have thought that miami would be in this situation now baltimore i could see that you guys have been building something great but miami not only that though you have the number one offense in the miami dolphins taking on the number six defense in the baltimore ravens and the number five offense taking on the number four defense. This game is going to be ridiculous. I think it's going to be a hard-fought game. I think the, the, what the Dolphins need to do is they need to focus, focus on Lamar, got to keep him in the pocket, can't let him run all over you. And for you guys, you guys got to focus on stopping our pass game and shutting down the run game. I think this is going to be a close game, and I'm hoping and praying that my prediction comes true. 
and I have the Miami Dolphins winning this one. Let's say 28 to 24. But I think this is going to be a really good game. And most importantly, regardless of who wins this game, I want both teams to come out of this one healthy because I know both teams are dealing with a ton of injuries. And with the playoffs right around the corner, we both need to be healthy in the playoffs. So regardless, stay healthy, but hopefully the Dolphins pull off the victory. And again, Ink Raven, thank you so much for having me on the channel. So a huge shout out to my guy, Dougley Durong. He is a phenomenal Miami Dolphins YouTuber. He is extremely consistent. His stuff is quality. He is on point. So y'all make sure y'all subscribe to his channel, whether you're a Dolphins fan or not, because I, I stay in, in tune with what's going on with Miami uh, through him. So he got it on point. Now, um, with this game coming up and with the Baltimore Ravens, even though they've been winning a lot, they've been doing their thing, there's still a lot of questions surrounding the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and we still got a lot of questions from Team Keep It Clean surrounding the Baltimore Ravens. So you know what? Let's get into it. First question came from my guy Caleb. He said a question regarding the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers. He said, Aaron Graven, I hope you and your family are doing well. We are doing great. I hope you're doing even better, Caleb. He said, I, I know right in this pre-49ers game, so I don't know if there's been any big or new plays regarding Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman. Some people may not like this, but Rashad Bateman has not been good this year at all. Sure, you can kind of say he's down there somewhere, kind of receiver, but other than that, he's not good at anything else or he's being misused, which I think he is. You got to choose one. You got, you got to choose one. You can't say, all right, Rashad Bateman is not good, but then turn around and say, oh, he's being misused. You, you got to pick a side. For me with Rashad Bateman, I, I think it's just been missed opportunities. There's been missed opportunities from Lamar where he's missed them. There's been missed opportunities from Bateman where he's dropped it. it, it it's just been missed opportunities. So I, I think, um, and then you got Zay Flowers, who he been getting a lot of targets. Uh, you got Odell Beckham Jr., I mean, you don't pay him 15 mil just for motivation or just for hype or just for dancing. Uh, you got to feed him the ball, too. So it, it's been a lot of other places where the ball has gone. Now, Rashad Bateman has gotten some opportunities now, but I feel like his opportunities are farther and fewer than the other two. Well, especially Zay Flowers. I feel like every, no, ain't nobody touches Zay Flowers when it comes to target. Um, but with Rashad Bateman, I feel like it's just been missed opportunities. But let me continue with the question. He said... Um, we all remember the Cardinals game where he had that 18-yard amazing jet sweep. He probably could have brought that to the house if the blocks were right. I personally don't like how Todd Monken is using Rashad as a fly route and post route receiver only. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Uh, he said, every time we see Lamar take the deep shot to him, it's overthrown, but not with literally any other receiver. Other than a couple of throws in the Steelers game, Lamar never overthrows OBJ, Flowers, or even Aguilar. He, he has uh, for Flowers. He's overthrown him. And OBJ, OBJ he's overthrown OBJ as well. Yeah, he has. He said, do you think Zay Flowers should be that kind of player to hit the uh, frequent streaks and posts and Rashad be the uh, on, be on to catch screens and jet sweeps? I think they can just mix it up. You can mix it up because you have receivers that can do more than just one thing. And like you mentioned, Rashad Bateman with the jet sweeps, that that's a sprinkle in Ravens game where it's like, whoa, like who, who would think a jet sweep was coming from a Rashad Bateman? Nobody would. From Zay Flowers, yeah. From Devin Duvernay, the jet sweep king, yeah. But from Rashad Bateman, no. And, and don't do it with Odell Beckham G. That, that's, that's not for him. But or Rashad Bateman, nobody, nobody will see that coming. But anyway, continuing. He said, I, I think Lamar is overestimating Rashad's speed, but handles OBJ's and Zay's speed pretty well. Sorry for the extremely long question. Uh, and hope everything is good with you. Shout out to Caleb. Um, nah, yeah, I, I just think with Rashad Bateman, because he, it, everything, now I, I get what you're saying. A lot of his stuff has been deep routes, post routes, goal routes, all that stuff, but not everything. Like even we saw in this last game, Rashad was working the, 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 the intermediate routes. And there was one where he he ran a nasty route, came back to the ball, was open. Oh, it's like, oh, Lamar put it on the money. We said, oh, and Rashad Bateman dropped it. So, it, again, it's, it's just, it's a mix of a lot of stuff. Again, sometimes it's been Lamar overthrowing him and missing him. Sometimes it's been Rashad Bateman mistiming the ball or, or dropping. And then sometimes it could, like you said, be the misuse of him as well. So, hopefully, hey, maybe they saving some stuff for the playoffs with Rashad Bateman. We got to see, though. Next question came from my guy Sean. He said, what's up, Ian Graven? Hope all is well. I've never been so confident in a Ravens game in my life. This game against the 49ers was a beat there. All the noise that has been going on in the media about this 49ers team, it was so funny to me. The media was acting like we were an under 500 team. Lamar is a clear MVP, and I'm so happy we were able to get this win. Just like they say, walk in your trap, take over your trap. Let's keep this momentum going for the rest of the season into the playoffs. I love it. So it, was, it really wasn't a question. He was just letting us know how, how great this Baltimore Ravens team is, and yes, I agree. Hopefully, they continue this thing all the way through the playoffs, through the Super Bowl, and through the next season, too.
Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, the Ravens have only lost three games this season by a combined total of 12 points. How are the Ravens considered underdogs in the game against the 49ers? It's pure disrespect that the media has so intently written off the best team in the NFL. Does the media uh, figure not understand that Lamar is 19-1, and one, well, 20-1 and one now, versus NFC teams in his career, and the undeniable fact that Lamar is a dog in December? Not only that... This defense is full of dogs. Since Roquan came to Baltimore, this defense, along with Mike McMack, has completely overall dominated their opponents. The weak points of this team are overshadowed by the strength and ability to overcome adversity, unlike in other seasons. This disrespect has to stop. The media has to stop. This 49ers team hasn't seen a Baltimore Ravens team like this all season, so I'm ready for these Ravens to shut up these naysayers and haters. <laughs> Charm City Super Bowl champs. <laughs> hey, he was on point, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Because... They, 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 they handled the 49ers big time, like in a major way. So, hey, you were spot on. And he also said, no one's a flowers is the number one wide receiver for these Ravens. Is there an argument for offensive rookie of the year due to the outstanding play and chemistry he has brought to this new offense? Your thoughts? No, it's not. Because you, he, he it would be extremely hard for him to compete with C.J. Stroud. Like, Stroud is, he's a quarterback. Like for and you know awards, offensive awards, uh, MVPs, rookie of the year, those heavily favor quarterbacks big time. So for Zay Flowers, he's not gonna get rookie of the year. But hey, you don't need it if you about to get a ring. Speaking of rings, next question came from T Dub, who sent it to the wrong email. But this. We at the end of 2023, so in 2024, we only sending it to the right emails. No more passes for nobody. Anyway, he said, uh, I'm writing this after the 33-19 victory over the 49ers. Would you say that after all the top standard teams the Ravens have beaten, we can win the Super Bowl this year? Hold up. T-Dub, where you been at? We've been saying that from before the season even started. We said that the only thing that could hold this Baltimore Ravens team back from winning the Super Bowl would be health. That's it. Health. So, yeah, we've been saying that before the 49ers game, before the Rams game, before all of that stuff. We've been on this. So, yeah, th this team, they help. Well, they're not too healthy, but they're healthy enough to get the job done. He said, um, our defense has looked dangerous. Our offense is strong, but it has its ups and downs. What do you think? That's true. The off well, everything you said is true. Speaking specifically with the offense, it's crazy how... Yeah, they have their ups and downs. They can be inconsistent sometimes, but they'll still put up like 30 points in the game. That's insane. Next question came from my guy, Terrence P. He said something interesting that nobody is talking about. What's up, Engraving? I've been following you since the 2019 season, and this is only my second time that I've sent in a question. Hey, hey, the more you send in, the merrier, but it's all good. I appreciate you. He said, uh, keep up the good work, and congrats to your family on a new addition coming your way. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, he said, okay, now let's get to it. Something nobody's talking about is that three of the, 40, the three of the four 49ers losses came against AFC North teams. Oh, Browns, Bengals, and now the Ravens. To me, this proves that the AFC North is by far the best division in football. Do you think this shows more about how good the AFC North is or how bad the NFC can be at times? Ah, uh, I think, hey, AFC North, I think that's just them handling their business because it, it, it wouldn't necessarily show how bad the NFC is because 49ers are still a really good team. They're a great team. Um, they got beat down by the Ravens. Now, think about this. Um, when the Ravens beat them, they had everybody. They had Brock Purdy. They had Christian McCaffrey. They had Debo Samuel. They had Brandon Ayuk. They had George Kittle. They had Trent Wood. They had their guys. But when the Browns beat them, they had lost, I know at least one of them, but they lost maybe two of their top guys. They had lost some of their top guys. And I believe they did for the other games that they lost as well. But I'm not 1,000% sure. But Ravens beat them full strength. But, yeah, I mean, so, hey. <laughs> anyway, next question. He said, uh, also, speaking of the Browns, I know I can't be the only Ravens fan that's nervous about possibly facing Joe Flacco in the playoffs. That man has been balling these last few games. Once again, keep up the great work. On the road to 75,000 subscribers. Hey, I appreciate that, Terrence. Hopefully, we do get there soon enough. But, shout out to Flacco. Flacco, yeah, it's been a lot of, uh, a lot of conversation about Mr. Joe Flacco And he has been doing this thing over He's been turning that ball over a good amount of times too But he has been um, performing and getting that job done For the Cleveland Browns And they are in the playoffs And as of right now they actually still have a chance At the number one seed Hopefully the Baltimore Ravens They take care of business tomorrow And they end any possible Brown chances At getting that number one seed They end the Dolphins chance at getting the number one seed And they claim it The, the Baltimore Ravens claim it as theirs officially um, So uh, As far as Joe Flacco Look, Ravens, I mean, as a Ravens fan, we were nervous for any playoff game, in my opinion. I still do the same thing the Ravens going to win the Super Bowl. 
But I, I'm, I'm nervous for any playoff game because it's a playoff game. It ain't no regular season game. It's like, hey, this is it. This is it. It's all or nothing, literally. Ain't no, oh, okay, we, we, well, we'll work on that and get back to it next week. No, this is it. You either win and move on or you're done. Your season is over. So I'm going to be nervous for every playoff game, but Ravens can't be nervous for any play. Like, that, in order to get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl, you got to go against whoever. You're going against the best of the best. You're going against the teams who have established themselves as the best teams in the league. And they made it to the playoffs. They made it to the tournament. So you got to take care of business against who, whoever it is. Yeah, hey, Joe Flacco been doing his thing, but it's like, all right, hey, Ravens just going to have to give Joe Flacco and them Browns that little Shawn Michaels to Ric Flair super kick. Next question came from my guy, Jamie B. He said, Jamie B, the boy, Baltimore Raven. I was told a long time ago that a hit dog will holler. He said, do you think Florio was hollering after all that backpedaling on December 26th, LOL? Tough when you have to eat your words, even though they don't believe in the Ravens. Team, keep it clean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he that yeah he he apologized and then he was like, oh yeah, the, the the Ravens are gonna kick the mess out of the Dolphins now. So don't don't say that now, man. Don't say that now. That you were talking greasy last week. Don't do that now. But it it is what it is, man. It is what it is. And um, hey, I, I mean, like my my thing is, I, I don't have a problem with people having their opinions on the Baltimore Ravens or whatever team. However, you feel like the game is gonna go. All right, cool. But just. The, the the reasoning sometimes That's where I could agree, disagree But I, I still respect everybody's opinion But yeah, he definitely uh, had to eat his words for sure Next question came from my guy Javo He said we got the best gift with that 49ers beat down But I still can't believe Hamilton fell down to us in the draft My question for you is Do you see a scenario where we can retain all of our defensive players for years to come? No, not at all Uh-uh It's just the way the NFL works Nope mm -mm. If Somebody got to go You can't keep everybody You You never can uh, he said, imagine how special this defense can be if we keep everyone around for years. Uh, yeah, so nah, mm -mm. nope. It, it's, you can't do it. You, you, you can't do it because that, that's what the salary cap is for. So players, they get opportunity to go play elsewhere. Some, some teams could be bad this year. Other teams could be good next year. Like, it, stuff could change so much. So, no. He also said, I have a non-Raven question, but something us Ravens fans need to pay attention to uh, is uh, Joe Flacco and the Browns as of late. So, have you been paying attention to them? Of course, we all have. Especially that being not only uh, uh, somebody else in the AFC, a playoff team in the AFC, but an AFC North team. Like, Joe Flacco is right around the corner. He, he's right up the street. So, yeah, Ravens fan, you know Ravens fan been paying all attention to that. Because uh, uh, it, it's like you just feel like we're going to get that matchup. Like Lamar versus Flacco in the playoffs. And we're going to say this, Joe, hey, we sorry, but we really ain't sorry. Next question came from my guy Eli. He said, hey, I'm going to follow you ever since 2018 when Lamar was drafted and have been uh, watching ever since. Hey, I appreciate that, Eli. Thank you. He said, your videos always keep me entertained and up to date on the Ravens, and I have always appreciated the level of respect you stand by. You're a perfect example of how all sports fans – uh, should behave. Oh man, you better make me get emotional. <laughs> let, me chill, let me chill out. But I appreciate you, man. I, I I really do, man. And I um I do really think that is important. I, I think it's important to have fun for sure. Have fun, but yeah, do it with a level of respect for for everybody. Um, because especially in sports, I know that can be hard for a lot of people. Because sports, you're talking trash. You're like, oh, my team's better than yours, and this is why. And da 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 da. Then people start getting personal, and it's like, nah, we no, it's. It's not about that. But anyway, I, I appreciate that. He said, with that being said, my question is, do you think Shannon Sharp has been too harsh on Lamar and his criticism this season? I see a lot of Ravens fans throwing shade at him for being hypocritical. However, I don't see it. Then again, I don't really watch every single clip, nor do I watch all of them in their entirety. Yet, I did see Shannon addressing these Ravens fans on his late night YouTube channel. I can't say I don't always agree with everything I hear him say, but to say he has been too harsh... I'm not exactly sure if I agree with this either. I'm just curious, do you have any takes on Shannon Sharp's critiques? And do you think he has been too harsh on Lamar like many Ravens fans have claimed? That is a great question. Shout out to Eli. Um, well, Shannon Sharp and his critique of Lamar Jackson, I think, I don't think it's that, I don't think Ravens fans' problem is that it has been too harsh. Well, some of them have, but I, I think with Shannon Sharp's critique of Lamar Jackson is that it hasn't been consistent. The way that he speaks about a Josh Allen, the way that he speaks about a Patrick, like with, with Josh Allen, with, if Lamar Jackson turns the ball over, then he will be all over it. Oh, he turned the ball over. That's why they lost. That's why, that's why this, that, and the third. But with Josh Allen, he'll view him more as a hero, 
even with the turnovers and stuff. Um, and with Patrick Mahomes, like he'll be like, oh man, Patrick Mahomes, he needs help at receiver. He need better receivers than that. But with Lamar Jackson, it's like the expectation, like, oh no, no, Lamar Jackson, he need to just step it up. If he's a real, if he's a good quarterback like he says he is, and like people say he is, then he needs to make the receivers around him better. I think that's what it's been. It's been so much inconsistencies, especially when, <coughs> excuse me, when you hear Shannon Sharp talk about other quarterbacks versus Lamar Jackson. I think that's what Ravens fans' biggest issue with Shannon Sharp is. Next question came from B. Moore Dre. He said, "Ain't Raven, what's up? Which Super Bowl do you think? Uh, which Super Bowl story do you think the NFL?" <laughs> He said, which, which Super Bowl story do you think the NFL will go with this year? He said, number one, Jalen Hurts lost the Super Bowl last year and comes back to win it all the following year. No. Uh, for the first time in NFL history, the Baltimore Ravens put together an all-black QB room, and in their first year, the team goes on to become Super Bowl champions. Hey, there we go. Let's get it, baby. The other ones don't even matter after that. He said, former Super Bowl MVP, uh, Joe Flacco comes back from being on the couch, takes the Browns to the playoffs, beats his former team, the Baltimore Ravens, and goes on to win another Super Bowl. No, no thanks. Uh, he said, or do you think they'll continue the Pat Mahomes story and allow him to go on to be the greatest QB ever? No, no, no. I, I think Pat Mahomes and this, the Chiefs this year, they are uh, done. I don't think they're getting it at all. Um, but, yeah, no, nah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's time for the Ravens to get it, man. It's time for the Ravens to get it, to, to shut all of that stuff up, to shut out all the noise and all that stuff. And, and it's time for them to bring that third Lombardi trophy back, but number one for Mr. Lamar Jackson and a lot of other people, too. You could go with this or you could go with that. Next question came from Terry. Terry said, I ain't great. I hope you and the fam are having a great time, man. God continues to bless you uh, guys as we proceed into the new year. Appreciate that, T. He said, I had a question if that's okay with you. Hey, you, you got it. He said, now you might, have, you might have a hard time selecting which one, but what team do you feel as though is a better and more complete unit? The 2012 Super Bowl Ravens or our current roster as of right now? Mm -hmm. Ooh, better, more complete unit. Um, wow, that is a good question. Uh, this defense, I think, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but I feel like this defense has been better when it's come to points allowed and even yards. Um, but I feel like that defense, I feel like, did they force more turnovers? It almost seemed like it, but I feel like that defense was more opportunistic. Um, because while they I think they were like middle of they were like 16th, 17th overall in defense. Um, but I feel like they they just forced them turnovers. They forced the turnovers at the right times and whatnot, even though this defense does the same thing too. Um offense, and they they got special players everywhere. Like Ray Lewis was there, Roquan Smith is here now, Airy was there, Kyle Hamilton here. Now not, not comparing Kyle Hamilton to Airy now, not doing that. But um I mean, it's a lot that we could. And then you think about the pass rushes, too. Terrell Suggs, he was there. Paul Kruger. So you had Jadavian Clowney. Sean, I was about to say Sean Merriman. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm really about to say Sean because I was thinking of Kyle, Kyle Vinoy's face. And then I was like, man, he, he kind of actually looked like Sean Merriman a little bit. It was a light skin thing. But anyway, um, that is a tough question. I don't know. The quarterback got Flacco to Lamar. Um, obviously Lamar regular season I think he got Joe Flacco, but postseason um, Joe Flacco that's when he he would go crazy. Now it's time for Lamar to go crazy this postseason. Running backs Ray Rice to um, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, uh, Ray Rice and Bernard Pierce uh, to Gus Edwards and Justice Hill um, and Melvin Gordon. So uh, the running backs they they got it back then. Um, tight ends. Well, I mean, current, like, Isaiah Likely, Dennis Pitta. Uh, Mark Andrews, Dennis Pitta. I, I go with that. But I, I'll get that to Mark Andrews. Um, it's tough. It, it's, it's, it's really a toss-up, man. It, it, it really is. We didn't even go through every position. Wide receiver, uh, OBJ. I guess that's sort of the Anquan Bolden. Just a lot more lively. <laughs> a lot more hype. A lot more dancing involved. Uh, Torrey Smith. I don't feel like there's a receiver that compares to Torrey Smith on our team right now. Um, Cause Torrey Smith, the deep ball, drawing the pass interferences, and Zay Flowers. I know as far as drawing penalties, I mean you can get that to Odell, Odell or Zay Flowers, but as far as being that true, consistent deep shot, not like Torrey Smith. They 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 just play so differently than Torrey Smith. Um, all the receivers now, um, but yeah, who else? Jacoby Jones, big return man. Um, I can't say Tylen Wallace is that. 
He did get that amazing return against the Rams, but Jacoby Jones was consistent. He was consistently getting these crazy returns and whatnot. So I don't know, man. I don't know. That, that's a really, really good question. Oh, and then he said, if you were to choose a team both being fully healthy, who do you think would win a game? Oh, fully healthy. Um, mm. Fully healthy, I would say these Ravens right now, if we're going fully healthy, because they would get J.K. Dobbins back. He just like Ray Rice. They would get Keaton Mitchell back with that speed. They would get Mark Andrews back. Um, they would get uh, oh, the slot corner. Or Darius Washington back. They will have Tyus Bowser too. They will get a Jabo back. Um, they like because again we got y'all know we got a long list of people. So that with them getting everybody back and then going again like that team really good now too. Now. And I actually think the the season before the 2011 season, I think that team was even better. I think they were even better than the 2012 Ravens. But uh, minus the kicker, because <laughs> uh, yeah. well, hey, what do we do at kicker? What do you do at kicker? You gonna have Justin Tucker just be all time kicker, like they playing play, playing street football? Hey, it might work though. But um, yeah. I, I, so if I had to choose, like, to go when they go head to head, I would choose uh, this year's fully healthy team. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> that's, a, "That's a tricky question, man." He said, "Hope you have a great start to the new year. Blessings and trust. Appreciate you, Terry." Next question came from my guy Terrell B. First, we got a question from Terry. Now we got a question from Terrell. He said, "I believe." And shout out to you and your pops. He said, I believe Coach Hobbs and Lamar have both accomplished enough to get a statue in front of the stadium, especially after winning the Super Bowl this year. Hobbs will have two, and Lamar will get his first, and, and another MVP, and all his other accolades. What do you think? For Lamar, no, not yet. And me, I'm, I'm not a fan of statues for people anyway, but that's, that's a whole other conversation. But <clears throat> uh, for Lamar, um, no, uh... Yes and no. I think that will more so be for people after they retire, after they're done, after it's all said and done, after that's a wrap. Like I thought, I think he got a statue at Louisville, and he's he's done. He he ain't going to school there no more. He ain't still playing there. Um, so I think that's more so when people are retired, they get they, when they get to the Hall of Fame or something. And, and Harbaugh, like especially, especially he get to a second Super Bowl. Yeah, it, Hall of Fame might as well be a lock for him. Like for real, think about it. That, that would pretty much that would make it a lock. I think. Um, and then for Lamar, I think it would just it would have to wait until after it's all said and done. Because hey, who knows? He he could add some more trophies to his case.